Okay, I think this is working. Uh, let me double check on my channel. Uh, while I'm checking, if, if you can hear me, my name is Mandy, and thanks for coming. It seems like every week I don't know what I'm doing, and I have to relearn it. So let me double check. Okay, if, if anyone cannot hear me, please let me know, and I will work on that. Okay. Oh, yep, I can hear myself now. <laughs> oh, hi, Anne. It's nice to see you. Uh, oh, yeah, the topic is really fascinating to me, climate change. I actually um, came up with the topic. I took a poll on an IELTS Facebook group that I belong to and asked everyone, tell me which topic you hate talking about the most, and climate change was a big one. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about climate change today, so I'll put that in the chat. Today's... Oh, let me see if I can type correctly. Today's topic is climate change. And that falls under the larger category of just um, the environment. And if anyone wants to follow along with me um, on their own, I can give you the link. These are the, this is the link to the same slides that I'm using. Um, and I say this every time, if you write on your slides, it's not going to show up live on mine. So write whatever you want. After the live uh, feed is over, I will upload the link to download this exact PDF. It won't have my writing on it, um, but you can write on it on your own or however you, however you want to. So yeah, and if there's any questions, um, you know, throw them in the chat. So again, my name is Mandy. We're gonna be talking about climate change um, with regard to the IELTS speaking parts one, two, and three. So. Let's just jump right into it. So if there's anything you already know about climate change and want to and wanna say, go for it. Or if you want to introduce yourself like Anne already has, um, you can say, hi, my name is, or hi, call me, whatever. And you can say where you're from. If you don't want to be specific, you could say, I'm from the United States, or I'm from the Western Hemisphere, Eastern Hemisphere, wherever you want. So welcome. Um, my name is Mandy, and we're going to be talking about climate change. Um, so today we have these uh, questions for part one. How do you protect the environment? And every time I do that, it's way too large. All right, so how do you protect the environment? Do you think climate change is a serious problem? Um, are there any environmental problems in your country? And why do some people refuse to care about the environment? So. Those are our part one questions. Um, our part two question is, is probably already know is going to be describe an environmental problem. Um, and I just left it very broad, any environmental problem. So anywhere in the world, or you can choose an environmental problem that is local to your country, even more local to your town or your city or just your neighborhood. So, all right, and our part three questions are what causes climate change? Should countries try to solve climate problems together or individually? And tell me why. Do old and young people view climate change differently? And how should we educate children to protect the environment? Um, so these are our part three questions. They're kind of deep, but I think together we can get through them. So let's go on to the topic of climate change. So um, when you look up climate change in the Cambridge Dictionary, which is um, the, the climate, the dictionary that is my favorite to use, it's changes in the world's weather, particularly an increase in temperature, thought to be caused by things such as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So if you don't know what climate change is, here is just a very brief overview. So changes in the world's weather, and we're not talking about day-to-day -day weather. Weather changes from day to day. We're talking about the long-term change to weather. So I live in an area of the United States that can be considered, um, well, I wouldn't quite call it tropical, but it's as close to tropical as the United States gets. It's in the south and then the east. Um, so our climate is considered, you know, warm or tropical. But 
um, the weather can change from day to day and season to season. Climate change permanently alters an area's normal weather patterns. So that is the difference between weather and climate, but you can Google it yourself for sure. And let's go over some vocabulary related to climate change. So, and again, if, if you're new here, I love having people throw in vocabulary that they'd like to use as well uh, to speak about climate change or the environment. So of course I have climate uh, versus weather. And so these are two different things. So we talked about climate being long-term weather that it doesn't really change over the long term. And just weather is daily. It changes daily, typically. Um, we can talk about the temperature, the season, some big uh, words related to climate change, deforestation. So if you're gonna say it uh, quickly, you're gonna say deforestation or deforestation. Habitat, ecosystem. We can talk about carbon and oxygen fertilizer, transportation, consumerism. I was trying to think of some causes related to climate change. You can also mention the ozone, the earth, the planet, the environment, and the atmosphere. And then we can talk about some specific things, pollution, exhaust, smog, um, I'm sure there's even more things, but if anyone has any ideas of vocabulary that they would like to add as it relates to climate change or just climate in general, you can drop it into the chat. And thank you for everyone that's come today. It's nice to see you all or see your uh, seven watching now. <laughs> so, all right. So does anybody have any ideas relating to climate that you would like to add? And I'll pause just a minute and let you come up with some ideas if you want. Okay. All right. So let's move on to some collocations. So, mm, good. Yep. Carbon footprint. That's a great collocation, carbon footprint. Um, so we have extreme climate, and actually here's carbon footprint, thank you, Harry, right here. Um, inhospitable climate, a severe climate, um, and those are kind of negative terms. You can say something has a beautiful climate or a wonderful climate. Definitely. Pollution is one that we can add on here. My pen is huge. Sorry, let me fix that. So we will add pollution. And carbon footprint, thank you, Harry and Anne. You can say some place has a warm climate, a dry climate, a wet climate, maybe a tropical climate. And these are not negative or positive words. They're just collocations. They're just how to describe it. A tropical climate. Um, I know that we can say something has an arid, A-R-I-D an arid climate, kind of like the desert. And then we have some more collocations. Of course, the, the, the topics are global warming, climate change, greenhouse effect, carbon footprint. Um, we also have fossil fuels, renewable energy, carbon emissions. That's a good one. Contamination is another thing for pollution. Um, we can use that that instead of polluting the water, we can contaminate the water. So contamination is one way, or we can use the verb to contaminate. Excellent. Okay. And let's see if there's any collocations that you all want to add. There was one greenhouse effect. Okay, that one made me think of greenhouse gases, which is almost the exact same thing as fossil, fuel, fossil fuels. So greenhouse gases, people like 
alliteration, fossil fuels, greenhouse gases. And if you don't know what a greenhouse is or the greenhouse effect, I don't think that's how you spell gases. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna Google it right now. <laughs> It's just one S. There we go. Oh my goodness, my English. Greenhouse gases. It's kind of the similar as fossil fuels. But anyway, if you've ever had a greenhouse or been in a greenhouse, you know that the cover is sort of like the Earth's atmosphere. It traps the, the, the heat and the gases in the greenhouse. And this is called the greenhouse effect, where we release all of these contaminate, contaminants or contamination into the Earth's atmosphere and the um, ozone layer doesn't allow it to escape. Um, so, and then we end up heating ourselves like on an oven. So fossil fuel or fossil fuels. Okay. All right, so here's some idioms and I found these idioms um, from an article on the South China Morning Post. If you um, if you Google uh, climate change it idioms, there's a great article, and I'll try to link it down below, a woman who writes for the South China Morning Post. She said, these are some great idioms to talk about climate change. So um, the first one, it's just the tip of the iceberg. So if you think about the ocean, or if you've ever heard the story of the Titanic, which I'm sure most people have. I have one student who's obsessed with the Titanic. The Titanic had a big iceberg. What you saw above the water was much, much smaller than what lies below the water. So the tip of the iceberg is sort of like a warning bell or just a small taste of what is to come. So it's just the tip of the iceberg. If you've seen some crazy weather in your area or around the world, you can say, wow, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Climate change is really happening before our eyes. Um, and then another one, a drop in the ocean. Some people avoid helping with the environment because they think what they're doing is just a drop in the ocean. It's just one small thing that doesn't have any effect. But as you probably know, one drop added with all of the other drops, it has a significant effect. Um, a hot potato is one thing that she used in her article and I added to it a hot button item. So this is kind of like a controversial topic. So climate change can be a controversial topic. A hot potato, if you've ever played the game hot potato as a child, you have a ball and you throw the ball to different people in a circle until the timer runs out and the last person holding it is the hot potato. So a hot button item or a hot potato is maybe a controversial topic. And then the sands of time are running out. Um, this is a really long idiom to say, but the sands of time are running out. If you think about the sands of an hourglass and um, the sand looks slow, like could go slowly at first and then it seems to be rushing. So, and then we can say, you know, alarm bells are ringing or um, this has set the alarm bells ringing. So there are people who are ringing the alarm bells about climate change. A lot of them are scientists or climate activists or things like this. So we're seeing this in the news a whole lot lately. So alarm bells are being rung about climate change. All right, and any other idioms that you all can think of, please feel free to share them. All right, so we're gonna move on to our first topic or our first question for part one. And How do you protect the environment? So how do you protect the environment? This is a great um, question to use the 
idiom that we had before, a drop in the bucket. Or a drop in the ocean, sorry. So what do you do to protect the environment? And we can use a synonym for environment. We can say earth, mother earth. or the planet. A rising tide floods all houses. That's another great um, idiom. I'm gonna add that in here. Thank you, Harry. A rising tide floods all houses. And what that basically means is if something is happening in another part of the world in relation to climate change, you might think it's very far away and it doesn't affect you, but it does affect you. It's a domino effect or a ripple effect. So when the tides rise, literally or figuratively, it affects every single, every single person's house. Okay, Anne, not throwing your trash anywhere. Good. So, um, so you can, we can talk about throwing trash away properly. I know we call it in the garbage can, but some people call it in the bin. And so we can take Anne's idea and she could say, you know, the examiner might ask her, how do you protect the environment? And, and Anne could say, you know, to be honest with you, it, it might seem like a small drop in the ocean, but I believe um, I can protect, um, save Mother Earth by throwing my trash in the garbage bin instead of throwing it on the ground and creating litter. Uh, this is just one thing that I have really um, made, um, that I have really tried to do and also to point out to other people you know, that this is just a, a small thing that we can do to help our planet. So that's just one of the many things that I do. Or you can, you know, if you say there's three things that I do, you need to list three things. But you can say there's a variety of things that I do to protect the environment. But one that I do every day is by is throwing my trash in the garbage bin instead of throwing it onto the ground. This may just be a drop in the ocean and I'm only one person but I feel this is my contribution to help protect Mother Earth. So, good, so protect the environment. So we can say save, um, safeguard. Great, that's a great idea, thank you, Anne. All right, and do you think climate change is a serious problem? So this is your personal opinion. And if you don't think it's a serious problem, that examiner is not going to judge you. They really don't care about your opinion, whether they feel emotionally connected that you're right or wrong. They're not supposed to have any emotional attachment to the questions or any opinion one way or the other. So you can say, absolutely not. I think there's a lot of climate, um, you know, a lot of scientists who are ringing the alarm bells and it's really not necessary. You know, I think Mother Earth is going to take care of itself like it always has in the past. And, you know, we just need to keep doing what we're doing and not worry about it. Or you can be on the opposite side of the fence and you can say, absolutely, I think climate change is a very serious. So you can add an adjective, very serious, um, Another word for, let's look up some synonyms for serious. So important, significant. Consequential, depending on how big of a word you want to use. Excuse my bad handwriting. 
um, it's a major or an urgent problem. And you can even say it's a pressing issue. So we can say that it's a problem, an issue. So do you think climate change is a very serious problem? And here we have the main topic of climate change, but yeah, we can sort of say global warming, um, you know, worldwide pollution or rising temperatures. Climate change can be explained by using those, um, those other collocations. So do you think climate change is a serious problem? And you can say, absolutely. I think it is a extremely consequential issue that we are facing today. Uh, we can, science has shown us, or I have read articles, try to make it about yourself. I have seen the news and read some, you know, some reputable articles showing the, um, the polar ice caps getting smaller and smaller and smaller over the years. And I find that it's just very um, scary to think that in our lifetime, we might be facing some very detrimental consequences. Okay, and are there any environmental problems in your country? So I know um, in the United States, I think um, it's a very big country, but one of the big problems we have here is probably with carbon emissions. We love to use gasoline. We love to burn those fossil fuels. We like every single person to have their own individual car and avoid public transportation. So therefore we have a lot of carbon emissions and air pollution. I think I was just watching a YouTube video that said um, there are some countries where their air pollution gets so bad during certain times of the year that it's not safe to go outside without wearing a special mask. So you can talk about air pollution water pollution. In my immediate area, it may seem like a good thing, but there is a whole lot of new construction happening. Um, and that means there's a lot of trees being cut down and not replaced. So we call that deforestation. You may not see the immediate consequences of it, but you better believe that when it rains, you're gonna see some flooding or even mudslides depending on where you live. Um, you know, the more hard surfaces you have, the less place that water has to be absorbed, you know, and trees hold the dirt in place. And so that just causes a domino effect. So um, deforestation, maybe there is an environmental problem of overcrowding or urbanization. So you could, you know, use the strategy of, actually there's a lot of uh, environmental issues in my, in my hometown, um, but the biggest one is, I would say, air pollution. During the summer, we have so many tourists in the area using motorbikes and cars, that it just causes a um, very difficult time for people to be outside, especially people with asthma and other medical conditions. Okay, and why do some people refuse to care about the environment? So why do some people refuse to care about the environment? Hello, Steve, it's nice to see you.
So why do they deny that there is a problem? Or why do they reject that there is a problem? Or why do they um, dismiss climate change? So why do some people, and we can change people really easily to men and women, citizens, you can even use your country name. So I can say Americans because I'm from America. Um, you can say, you know, I think many Taiwanese people refuse to care or many Chinese people or many Saudis, um, whatever country you live in. And then refuse, synonyms for refuse, or, you know, I think many men and women deny there is an issue with the earth and climate change. Because, yeah, Steve, that's a great idea, because they think it's a waste of their time. You know, humans have a finite time on earth, and we don't know how much time we have. So we kind of just are like, you know, just let the next person take care of it. I'm going to enjoy my time here and not worry about it. So, yeah, that's a good idea. It's a waste of time. When we talked earlier, um, let me go back really quickly to our idioms. We can say, you know, it's, it's a really hot button item and people love avoiding controversial topics. Um, or they feel that what they're doing is just a drop in the ocean and it doesn't really matter because so many people aren't helping the environment. So what, what's the point of one person helping if a thousand other people are not? Um, so why do some people refuse to care about the environment? It's a waste of their time. Um, some people are more concerned about living day-to-day -day life. Their immediate needs are more pressing. So how are they going to put food on the table? How are they going to pay for their kids' schooling? How are they going to make rent that month? Um, in the United States right now, or, you know, uh, if in, um, you know, in Europe, there is a war going on. So when a war is going on, you know, the environment takes a back seat. Because people are indolent doing such things. Okay, and that's a good answer too. So they're worried more about their immediate needs. Um, there are other issues that are more pressing or they simply just don't care. They can just be lazy <laughs> and they want to pass the buck, which means they want to, you know, give it to somebody else to take care of and not worry about it. Okay. So we're going to move on to our favorite part two: describe an environmental problem. You should say what the problem is, what's the cause of the problem, how are the effects, what are the effects of this problem, and how can we solve this problem? So, of course, you hear problem over and over and over again. So when you are answering, please try to avoid using the word problem so many times. So let's first come up with some synonyms for problem. Not to be confused with math problems, so don't use equation. Um, describe an environmental problem. So we have issue, obstacle, predicament, dilemma, headache, hassle. Um, I wouldn't really say a nuisance because that's not a big problem. Uh, a worry. Um, a dilemma is another one. I, I like using conundrum. <laughs> and Steve, you said, besides, their work may not be recognized due to the innocent of citizen. A complication? Yep. I really wrote poorly right here. So an issue, complication... So instead of saying um, an environmental problem that I know of, or let me tell you about an environmental problem that I am aware of. So we've talked about this in the past. We're just going to take the larger topic of environmental problem, 
And we're going to say an overall statement about that. And then we're going to dive into a specific issue or complication that you feel comfortable talking about. Um, so instead of saying, let me tell you about an environmental problem, we can start off by saying there are a myriad or a variety of issues facing um, Earth today or our planet today. Um, we could talk about deforestation, climate change, um, you know, urbanization, many, many things. But the one that I am most familiar with is, and then you can talk about which one you're most familiar with, global warming, um, deforestation, urbanization. So let's throw some ideas out there. So we talked about deforestation. Urbanization means that we're kind of building up an area for humans and buildings to live there and sort of taking away the, hab the natural habitat of animals, livestock, plants, things like that. We could talk about pollution. I know I read an article recently about microplastics in the ocean, so air pollution and water pollution, that there is a large amount of microplastics in the ocean, and fish eat those, and we eat fish if you eat fish, so we are ingesting plastic, and as many of us know, plastic does not break down. So what effect does that have on our bodies? So deforestation, urbanization, pollution, water pollution, microplastics. Um, there's many, many ideas. So if anyone wants to pick one. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So we also, we talked a little bit about melting ice caps. The polar ice caps. So if you don't know how to find an idea about the environment, an environmental problem. I'm gonna show you right now. My favorite website is Ngu, and you can go to their daily news section, and you can look up in the search environment, or climate change, or global warming, whatever you want to talk about. This is a hot button topic right here. Want to protect the environment? Stop eating meat. Everybody needs to go vegetarian or vegan. So um, that is another way that you can look up and learn a little bit about an environmental issue that's facing the world, and that might help you. Okay, so Steve says, um, it's such a complicated problem in my country now because it's already happened for many decades. Pollution equals contamination. Yes. Steve, contamination and pollution are almost synonymous, so you can use them interchangeably. So you can say water contamination, air contamination. Um, most places that you can use pollution, you can talk about contamination. And I'm going to put um, the Daily News link in here for Engu for anyone that wants to use it. I'm not in any way affiliated with Engu, but I do use their materials all the time for students. They have some really great questions at the bottom of their articles, and you can choose the article level that works best for you. All right, so describe an, an environmental problem. Mm, I'm going to pick um, deforestation because I read an article about it, and it had uh, a picture. So. There's a myriad of issues facing Mother Earth today. Um, we could talk about many things from urbanization to water pollution, contamination of our fish and our seas. Um, but the one that I want to talk about is deforestation. Um, I have read a few articles about deforestation and why it's important to stop deforestation um, and to actually 
how we can reverse the effects of deforestation. Um, major, the major rainforest that is being cut down is the Amazon rainforest in South America. And with that rainforest, according to the article that I read, produces a large amount of oxygen for the earth, as well as it also absorbs a large amount of carbon dioxide, therefore kind of acting like a filter or a sponge that helps clean the air. Um, and if we continue to allow businesses and people to cut down these trees, we are only hurting ourselves and our environment by giving less clean air. Um, also, these trees have valuable resources. There's many medicinal plants that have been found in the Amazon rainforest, as well as many animals that have been newly discovered or yet to be discovered that have uh, really helpful effects for humans. So yeah, this is probably the most pressing environmental issue that I can think of right now. And a way to solve this is by planting trees. I know there are a lot of initiatives with some major companies that will send you seeds or allow you to make a donation so that they will plant trees um, in your stead. So, all right, and Steve says, this contamination happened due to the fact that the factory often throws the industrial water or industrial waste into the rivers, lakes, and seas for many years, but there has been no interference from the government to deal with this issue. Okay, so you're talking about, oh yeah, toxic dumping. <laughs> And Steve, do you think there has been no in intervention or interference on behalf of the government? Because this company brings in a lot of money for the government. They pay a lot of taxes. So you kind of see those things being hot button items or hot potatoes that people want to pass around but nobody wants to deal with. So yeah, so we can talk about um, toxic waste from factories and on the one hand the factories provide jobs for people they provide goods and income but they also produce some toxic waste and unfortunately like Steve said they have been allowed to dump their waste for many years without any consequences all right, let's jump on to part three because we're taking a lot of time for part two. So what causes climate change? What causes climate change? This is a really difficult question. Uh, and this is part three. This is not I think or this or that. You're going to try to keep it third person and keep yourself out of it. And... It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. It only matters how you speak about it. So um, from the research that I have conducted on global warming and environmental issues, there are there is not just one thing that creates climate change. There are a multitude of things happening that are creating climate change. <laughs> and Anne, you're right. This When an examiner asks you what causes climate change, that's a perfect answer. You can say, oh, wow, that's quite a hard question. Um, I'm not an expert, but from my understanding, there are many things that have contributed to global warming and climate change. So there's your beginning. <laughs> so we can kind of use something to buy ourselves time, a statement to buy ourselves some time to gather our thoughts, and so Anne said, oh, wow, that's quite a hard question. And then we're going to go into that formula that we've talked about before, opinion, reason, example, and conclusion or consequence. So Steve is continuing, water contamination has caused many disasters in our main business, which is agriculture. And furthermore, it has caused soil erosion for recent years. And Steve, as... A result or as a ripple effect of that soil erosion, when you have rain in your country, do you have any mudslides or do you have any flooding? Um, you know, 
I know there was that hugely devastating flood um, in, in Germany. South Africa has had some really bad flooding um, as well. And it has been devastating for those countries because they don't have, um, you know, plants to hold the soil in place as well. Who wants dirty, contaminated water flooding their area? All right, so we're going to buy some time for this question. Wow, that's a really difficult question. Um, but from what I understand, climate change is caused by many different factors. So our opinion, it's caused by or a res it is a consequence of. So a cause, a consequence or a result of, yeah, a hard question, an intriguing question. You don't have to be a robot when you're asked a question and not give any emotion in response to that question. It's okay to have an emotional response to a question as long as you express it in English. That's just what normal conversation is like. So if someone asks you a question that kind of takes you aback, you're like, wow, that's a really intriguing question or wow, that's quite a difficult question. And I've never really thought about it before. But from what I have read and heard online or read in the news or studied in school, there are a myriad of reasons um, or a myriad of uh, issues that have led us to the climate change problems we're having now. So, um, so, and then reason, that's your opinion, a reason, um, and then you can list a few of them, you know. I think it's a consequence of industrialization and businesses being allowed to dump toxic waste and contamination into public drinking water, into water that holds our fish and our livelihood. That's one, one reason of one, that is one cause of climate change. You can add more. You can say on top of that, humans are a major um, factor when it comes to climate change. And Anne says, it's caused by the people who are reluctant to provide the clean and green activities for our mother earth. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, you can also say it's a result of, you know, just plain human laziness. We are used to having our conveniences of a car per person or multiple cars per household. Whereas if we did this, you know, and then here you want to get into a specific example. So let's take Anne's. People are reluctant to have green activities to help our mother earth. And in the United States, one of those green activities is using public transportation. For some reason in the United States, especially in less industrial areas, more urban areas, like suburban areas, people hate public transportation because they are very independent and they want their own car. car. So this is not a part two question where you get a whole two minutes. You probably get like at most a minute to talk about this. You can say, wow, that's a really difficult question. There are a myriad of reasons uh, or a myriad of things that I think are res uh, that are a result that result in climate change, um, and one of the major ones that I can see in my area is people's reluctance to use public transportation. This causes there to be a huge amount of um, gas and carbon carbon emissions released into the atmosphere. If humans, if people would just think about their fellow citizens and Mother Earth and use public transportation, we could drastically cut, we could drastically reduce our carbon footprint. So, um, and sometimes it's difficult to explain why something happens, so we can explain what happens if it doesn't occur, if that makes sense. So I kind of did that when I said if, um, you know, if we don't do this, then this will happen. Or if we do 
use public transportation, then we can reduce our carbon footprint. Okay, I feel like I'm rambling here. So let's move on to the next one. Should countries try to solve climate problems individually or together and why? So for this one, I'm gonna write a saying. This is just my personal opinion. You don't have to have this opinion. But it is a common saying when you need to work with other people. Um, it's teamwork makes the dream work. We love to rhyme because we remember things when they rhyme. It's like singing. So teamwork makes the dream work. So I guess you can kind of tell what my feeling is on this question. Should countries try to solve climate change problems individually or together? So we can kind of start off, well, there's the saying that teamwork makes the dream work. So in my opinion, if countries are able to put aside their differences and their uh, whatever issues they have with one another and work as a cohesive unit, then we can solve the climate issues in no time flat. Um, <laughs> I don't know how we can do this, but, um, or, you know, I've heard other students talk about, you know, while countries have borders, pollution doesn't have any borders. Um, the polar ice caps melting don't have any borders. Deforestation doesn't have borders. So we may divide ourselves into countries and ethnic groups and cultures, but pollution doesn't care who we are or where we're from. It's going to go wherever it wants to go. So of course, we definitely need to band together and be a team to solve these problems. We can pool our resources. So we can talk about pool, P-O-O-L, pool our resources. So our resources like our money, because not every country has a lot of money to spend on solving climate change, but they may have knowledge. They may have scientists um, or people who are very um, intelligent and can come up with ideas. Oh my goodness, I need a spell checker. We can pool our money, our knowledge, um, our resources, just like with the COVID vaccine, we would have hoped that people would pool our, their resources to create a vaccine that would be done quickly and available to everyone right away. And this is an excellent answer. Um, should countries try to solve climate problems individually or together? Um, so you can say, well, uh, it starts within ourselves first by being responsible citizens in our own country. So good, yeah. So you can start individually and then work together, or you can just, um, you know, have national pride and work together within your country. Another um, good idiom to use on this one is two heads are better than one. meaning that if you have more than one person working on something, it's gonna get done faster. And this is why you see things like the Paris Climate Accords or the climate summits that have been happening where countries come together and they talk and they come up with ideas together and they bring the best and the brightest minds together to come up with solutions. All right, and let's move on to the next one. Do old and young people view climate change differently? Do old and young people view climate change differently? So this is one of those part three questions that is a compare and contrast. And you may feel that it doesn't have anything to do with the person's age, but maybe it has to do 
with their socioeconomic um, situation. So if they are a person who is more concerned with getting food for that day, climate change may not be on their radar. It may not be something that they're really looking to. So they may have blinders on to climate change and they're solely focused on what's most important and that is feeding themselves or their family for that day. But people who have more money and more resources might be more um, outwardly minded. So it might not have anything to do with age and it might have to do, you know, with their economic status or it might have to do with what country they live in. Some countries are more, um, you know, geared or more um, aware of climate change and they are making a major push for climate change. So is the government pushing this country to be aware about environmental problems or is this country just trying to survive and that's what's important right now? So Steve, you said, and I think there's no difference between the old and the young's generation view of environmental problems. Um, yeah, that, that's a great opinion, you know? And then you wanna go on to say why, you know? You can say, you know, the older generation has the benefit of seeing changes over time. Um, so they can see what changes has, have happened over the years and young people um, have the benefit of technology and, um, <laughs> you know, educate, you know, new technologies and educations to learn about and study climate change. So while they may have different experiences, I think they all have the same goal, which is to stop global warming and to hopefully reverse the effects of climate change. Okay, and then let's go on to the last one. How should we educate children to protect the environment? So the IELTS loves to ask about what we should do for the upcoming generation, future generations. Um, and this is a great place to use future tense. So how should we educate children to protect the environment? And we can use some synonyms for educate, such as teach, maybe inform. Definitely for children, we can say kids. We can say boys and girls. And we can even call them students because education typically happens first in the home and then in school. Uh, you could also call them future generations. So we have kids, boys and girls, students, future generations, or we can even call them young people. There's lots of ways. So what about some synonyms for educate? Does anybody have synonyms for educate? So Steve, on the previous question, you're saying, I think there's no difference between the old and the young, the younger generation's view on climate change. In the past, air pollution had become a hot problem and the elderly um, used to solve these issues. Until now, the older generation often encouraged the younger one to protect our planet. And they've talked about their stories about how they have prevented the contamination when they were younger. Um, Anne says we should protect them by encouraging them to be good citizens by doing some seminars or activity programs that, that talks about the environment or that tackles environmental problems. Yeah, and Steve, teach, inform, train. Good, those are some excellent ones. So train, we can talk about guide. How can we guide children? 
uh, prepare, inform. Because to be honest, you know, this environmental problem, the climate change issue that we're having is being handed to children because they are growing up and they are going to have to take over. Um, so they're going to need to carry on the torch, so to speak, um, into the next, you know, decades. And the choices that we make now will definitely affect them. So how should we educate children to protect the environment? Um, yeah, how? <laughs> so if this question was, and, and protect the environment, um, we can talk about be environmentally friendly. And I think Anne used it before, um, protect Mother Earth. Instead of just protecting the environment, we can teach them to be eco-friendly. Hmm. Yeah, nurture them. That's a good one. How can we grow up or how can we um, raise children to protect the environment? So how should we educate children to protect the environment? Those are some synonyms, but what are some real world answers? Like what can we do practically? Um, so Anne, we should um, prepare them by encouraging them to be good citizens. And in order to accomplish this, we can show them through our actions um, and programs that will tackle environmental issues. And then we're gonna go into a specific example. So, um, you can talk about, maybe they talk about reduce, reuse, recycle at school. Um, I know that's a big topic that happens when my kids come home. If I put the wrong thing in the wrong bin, they definitely say, oh, my teacher said that needs to be recycled or that can't be recycled or you need to buy something. So that's not, that's not so in, environmentally unfriendly. Um, so they're very conscious, especially if they learn it at school what their teacher says is the law, <laughs> according to them. So, um, yeah. So let's, let's answer this fully instead of just in part. Um, I believe that we can nurture children and inform them on how to be environmentally friendly in the home and in the school. Of course, education starts at home first, and parents can set examples for their children on how to recycle and why they recycle and what things they can recycle in their own home. Um, in addition to that, when they go to school, they can have seminars and programs that show children how to do things like plant trees and why it's important. They can have science experiments um, as well as, you know, reading and writing activities where they learn how to be more environmentally friendly and then they write about it or make presentations on it. So there are a number of things that we can show to our future generations so that they know how to tackle the climate problem that we are facing now. So, all right, guys, we are almost at one hour. So if anyone has anything else they would like to add, please drop it in the chat box. I'm gonna take a quick drink. I know we're on a little bit of a delay, so let me let it catch up. And I'm going to flip back to the beginning. So if you didn't get to join us in the beginning, you can see where we started with climate change. Um, and we did talk a little bit about if you don't know how to talk about climate change, you can definitely go to the NGU Daily News website. In the search bar, type in climate change, global warming, environment, any of those topics will give you lots of information on climate change and, and very useful articles to read. Um, and they have great questions at the end. So we talked about climate change. What is climate change? 
uh, to changes in the world's overall weather, particularly increases in temperature. Um, and they're thought to be caused by things such as carbon dioxide in the, in, in the atmosphere. And we talked about carbon dioxide is usually comes from those fossil fuels. So we're not talking about wind, solar, or water energy. We're talking about burning coal, using gasoline or petrol, whatever you want to call it. Um, so those are fossil fuels. And then some vocabulary that we went over um, is listed here. But I think the best ones were these idioms that were wonderful. Like I said, we got them from the South China Morning Post. Um, it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg, a drop in the ocean, a hot button item, the sands of time are running out, and we're set the alarm bells ringing. We have set the alarm bells ringing about climate change. So it's been great to talk to you all or talk to you and hear from you. Thank you for Steve and Harry and Anne and anyone else that was able to write in the chat and join us. Thanks for coming. Um, hopefully by tomorrow, my tomorrow, sometime, maybe your Monday, I'll be releasing my video for the week that's a lesson. And we're gonna be talking about conditionals, when to use conditionals um, in just normal English speaking. So it's been great to see everyone. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'll talk to you next week.